Okay. Um, I'm not sure if more people are joining, uh, but maybe we should just kick off. Okay. So I'll just uh, share my screen. Okay, never presented from uh, Google's oh, there we are. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, so uh, today's topic, uh, please just let me know if you can hear me. Okay, perfect. Uh, so today's topic, it's, a, it's more of a continuation. Uh, of what we've been talking about in the past two days, uh, which was um, data cleaning um, and uh, transformations, as well as um, uh, what was it? Uh, but, uh, explorations, right? So today it's more about you know now we've cleaned our data, um, now we've explored it, we've learned a few things, we've drawn some graphs. We, we kind of know what our data is about. Um, so now it's time for us to do uh, some machine learning, right? So in the, I think in the uh, invitation, it says data modeling. Actually, it's just machine learning modeling, uh, even though we'll be uh, working with um, data, we're not actually doing data modeling. Um, the way I understand it, data modeling is more to do with, you know, uh, your database, so schemas, uh, you, you, the types of your data, uh, all those kinds of things, and, 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 and how you structure that. But I think our focus today is more on, you know, given that we have this data uh, in a tabular form, how can we sort of build a model uh, from that? Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at. Um, Okay, so this is the outline. We probably uh, uh, won't, you know, cover all of these things. I think we're just probably going to cover just the first part. Uh, we'll, uh, yeah, so we'll talk about uh, the second part, Streamlit and uh, dashboarding, etc. Uh, later on in, in the course. I think Anastasia has a few words to, make, to say. Uh, but I think today it's just mostly about building machine learning models. So uh, what are the steps that we take when we want to build our machine learning models? Uh, so we, I mean, this is, this is not, uh, you know, in, 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 in a chronological, chronological order, uh, you know, so you select appropriate model for your problem, build the, the model, save features for later use, uh, save the model for um, later use. So, I mean, you, you, you remember it in crisp DM, all the things that you have to do. So this is just on the model building part, but before you build a model, there's a lot of things that um, go into it, uh, like deciding uh, what problem you want to solve. Uh, is it an interesting problem? Is it a useful problem uh, to solve a bit? Is it even solvable? And then you can eventually uh, go to uh, building a model. Okay, so I think that's it by way of, of slides. I don't think there's much more that I can say here, uh, but basically uh, this is really uh, the, the steps that we will need to look at uh, in this tutorial. Um, cool. So, uh, okay, so I've, the notebook has been shared with you which is this one, which says data modeling. Um, I sort of did a rewrite um, so that it's easier to explain. Uh, 
So I'll share this new one with you. Um, I think, actually, let's see. Um, okay, I think let me do that now. Um, okay, we okay, download it. Okay, just gonna, so I'm gonna upload it onto, onto your drive so that if anyone wants to follow, they can follow. Okay. one and we're here so instead of this one right instead of this one that we have here data modeling um, i'm going to upload this one called predicting hospital at readmissions for diabetes patients so that's what i'm uploading now that's the one that uh, but if if you, you prefer to follow <clears throat> you can follow with all right uh, Okay, there we go. Okay, it's uploading now. Cool. All right. Um, I'm sure many of you have worked with Collab. Um, so, yeah, so you know that, okay, if you, so, okay, so that's what it looks like. So let me, okay. Let's see if the data is in here. Okay. The data that I'm using now is not in here. Uh, but I mean, th the notebook that I'm using, uh, I've already executed uh, most of the stuff. But I think if you want to execute yourself, let's see. Uh, okay, it's there. Okay, so I'm just going to upload it. This is the diabetes data set, um, which actually is online. I'll, uh, okay, so let's upload this. Okay, so data set is uploaded as well if you want to execute the code uh, for yourself. Okay, shouldn't take long. Okay, there we go. Okay, so, okay, so. I think I probably renamed it. Uh, yeah, I've renamed it, but you'll see. So I renamed it uh, diabetes for CSV. Okay, so I load that. Then I load a few uh, libraries that I'm going to use later. Uh, Pandas, you know, NumPy, you know. I think the things that maybe we haven't spoken about so far are these three things. So label, encoder, uh, time series split, and standard schema. Um, I'll, I'll explain them when, when we, we need to use them later. We're going to be using them uh, towards the end of, of the notebook, right? So I, I like to set uh, this, uh, you know, pandas that set option, display maximum columns to none. Uh, because when I want to view, uh, you know, the first few rows, I want to be able to, to see uh, everything. So if you don't set that, so this one will, will not truncate the, your columns. You'll be able to see everything, right? So it doesn't limit you in terms of which columns to see, no matter how many columns you have. Because I think for memory reasons, Pandas likes to, you know, truncate some. So you'd see that it'd be uh, ellipses here. Yeah. Pandas would, um, it's not Pandas, Jupyter Notebook will show you a few, the first few columns and then the, the last few columns. But in the middle, there wouldn't be anything. Like if you've got a big data frame. So if you set this <clears throat> option, it will show you anything, right? Uh, so, okay, so uh, so I'm reading my, my CSV, right? So my data, this data that I have here, right? I'm doing the diabetes at CSV. I'm reading it and I'm saying, you know, for a non values, right? It's either it's, there's a question mark or it's not, right? Uh, this is based on looking at the data. I mean, when you read it for the first time, you didn't know. Uh, so, but eventually, after you read the data, you know which ones are advanced. So, what Pandas will do in this instance is that it will, you know, wherever it finds a question mark or none, it will change it to 
uh, not a number, N A N. So that it will change it to this, right? Just so that we have some consistency uh, and we can treat uh, them the same because really they are the same uh, values. So just, just some standardization there. Okay, cool. So yeah, we can look at you know all of these, try to figure out what does our data frame contain, what is our data set about, you know. Uh, but just looking through, you know, all these uh, columns, you really you don't understand much, right? You don't really understand much. Some some columns are clear, you know, you probably figure out okay, this is what it means. Um, but what really helps in most cases is having a sort of a data dictionary, right? So in here, I've also shared this um, IDs mapping to CSV five. Uh, it's in here as well. Uh, but what this one does, uh, what it shows you, uh, but I actually printed it out here with this uh, command line um, uh, command, to sort of try to see what's in there, right? So uh, in your data frame, there's a bunch of values, right? Um, and, and those values, basically, they mean something, right? So what they've done is that instead of, you know, saying uh, discharged uh, to whom they put one instead of they, they put two, right? So, but what are those, uh, what do they actually mean, right? If you want to dive, delve deeper into the data set. So they explain to you what those mean uh, and that this information is in this um, IDs mapping CSV. Okay. Now, um, I mean, that, that data frame is huge that I've printed out but you can sort of also see you know, all the columns just in a, in a small, uh, in a clear format. You can see all the columns that are there. Um, and I'm sure some of this, I'm just gonna run quickly through, through it before we, you know, I'm sure some of this, these things came up uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday, uh, but I've re-returned some of it, uh, you know, that sort of makes more sense to me and so I can easily explain it to you guys. Uh, so basically here, uh, I've actually sort of just created a, a new data frame, right? I've, I've called it stats, right? To try to figure out, you know, what are the missing, uh, you know, views in, in that data frame for all the columns, right? So number of, of missing, you know, it's, it, I get it by running this instruction, the shape of data frame, so I want the number of rows from there. And then there are two columns that I'm creating, new columns that I'm creating that I'm interested in. Uh, I'm not going to put this back into the main data frame. It's just uh, to check uh, some things, right? Uh, basically, just to check how many are missing, right? Uh, and and in, in this case, uh, these are uh, missing, right? So I think in the yesterday's tutorial, the day before yesterday, uh, you used a, not number of rows, but you used like a product of number of rows uh, times number of columns. I've decided to use a uh, number of rows. Because really, I'm not interested in the, the number of cells that, you know, in total. I'm just interested in, for your particular column, how many are missing. So this is what it's giving me, right? And there's a, yeah, there's a lot of um, partners to the mistakes here, guys. Uh, so feel free if, if you need to, if you have a question. Um, and if in any of the other tutors are online, uh, because sometimes I'm not able to see your comments, your 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 your, your, your chat messages. If they can just add it, if there's a question, right? Uh, so there's a lot of pandas gymnastics here that I'm doing, uh, but that's fine. You know, just creating a new data frame, uh, you know, adding creating two new columns that I'm interested in, and then saying, you know, instead of just you know printing everything, let's just ignore all the other uh, columns in the data frame and only look at the ones where, you know, they are now, right? So this is saying, you know, take all the, the columns where, you know, the are some missing values, right? And then I look at the percentages here, right? So race is about 2%, which is 2,200 and something missing. Uh, weight, it's about 96%, that's a huge number. Pair code, about 40%, so about 50% because, so these are the percentages that are missing. Right. And you can see some are really, really high, right? Um, and in terms of making you modeling decision, 96% is huge, right? Like you can, you know, you don't have 4% of, well, actually this is 3%, but right? if you want to, you don't have 3% of the weights. Really, you can't do anything with that, right? 
so which is why we come here we say okay so the ones with with, with, with large uh, missing values with a lot of missing values uh we just if if it's more than five percent right uh you just create a column so what i like to do so instead of doing things like this right uh, i could have just easily looked through through this right this indices and said okay 96 uh 40 percent 50 percent and then created a, a list right i like to do it programmatically right so something like this so that if you know if these values change right this uh line of code can still work right because if you hard code things when something small changes, then your code will break, right? So you want to do it as programmatically as possible if you are able to, right? So just figure out, okay, cool, how do I get this? And this is how you get it, right? If this column has a value that is five, which means that it's more than 50%, then I create my uh, list of columns, which is a large list of columns, right? And then this is, this is this, which is the same thing as this one, if I just list it up. And now I'm saying just drop, you know, all the all the columns. Uh, so X is one, it means columns. If X is was zero, it means row, right? So drop all those columns. So all those columns are gone, right? And then okay, so now we just you know see okay, cool. Uh, shape. So if you so before shape was we didn't run it. It was fifty columns. Now we're down to forty five. So we've, we've still seen that one, two, three, four, five are gone. So our instruction really works. Uh, cool. Um, so okay. So these are the columns that we are left with. Um, so the other thing that I've done. Um, so this data set that we're using, uh, it's a quite a, a, fami a familiar or famous data set. Uh, so you find it in a lot of areas. Uh, that so actually even here on Kaggle, um, okay. So there's a question that I'm seeing. What percent? Yeah, I, I think um, I think in yesterday or day before yesterday, um, the the check was thirty. Uh, if it's if it's thirty or more, right? I've selected five because I mean I think. It will not change anything. So the question is, how? What's the percentage of uh, of, of missing uh, data like in a column? It makes sense to drop the column. Uh, here, I've said um, I've said five, but really, even if I said thirty, it will still give me the same result, right? Because you see, from two percent, the the next largest uh, percentage of missing data is is uh, thirty nine point five six. So even if I said 39 here, right, I'll still get the same uh, same result, right? Uh, so I'm I'm just saying saying five here because you know it makes sense based on the data that I have. But really, it depends on you know your your data and what you're trying to achieve, right? Uh, yeah, and and what it means to, to drop those things. Sometimes um, the data is too critical; <laughs> you can't drop anything. Uh, I'm just thinking if you are looking at, you know, uh, plane crashes, <laughs> for example, like maybe you don't want to drop any of that information. Maybe all of it is, is important, right? So it really depends on, on what you're looking at. Uh, but anyway, for this uh, case, we just said five, or it could have been 30, could have been 39, based on what we have here. Okay. So, okay, so the columns have been dropped as you've seen. Okay, cool. Now these are the columns we have. So what I was saying is that, um, this data set, so if you, you can do a quick Google search and just look for diabetes data set, you'll find uh, the original um, place where this data set comes from. Uh, but even here on, on Kaggle, they actually have it. So, but what I also found from this is on this tab, um, it's, you have this thing, there's a PDF file called uh, description, right? Um, impact of uh, HB, A1C, whatever, whatever this thing is, right? But this is just explaining what what's contained in the, in the data set, right? So it's data description. Uh, and what I've gone to do from based on this is just to say, you know, let's get, so in there, there's the, you find this information, right? In some pages there, where they actually explain all the features, right? Because first thing, I mean, some, some features are explanatory, right? Uh, race, I mean, if race is not explanatory, it could be 
the races and like car racing or whatever. So you want to know what race means. You want to know what they mean by gender. You want to know by encounter ID, what all these things mean. Right? Before you even play with, with your data, you want to know what each feature uh, name means, right? So that, like we were saying yesterday, that, you know, it depends on what the column means, right? If you know what it means, then you know in terms of imputing, right, what you can impute. But if you don't know, if you don't have an explanation of what that feature or column means, then you know, um, really you're, you're you're shooting in the dark, right? You don't you don't know what you're doing. Right? So it helps to always have this kind of information to say what what do my columns mean? Right? So there are a lot of columns, fifty columns, you know, but they explain to you what each of them means. Um, you'll see actually what is, is actually very interesting is what uh, diag one, diag two, diag three means, right? You think, okay, I mean, I was thinking diagonal, but no, it's diagnosis, right? I mean, of course, we're dealing with patients, right? It's diagnosis one, two, three. Um, so there's, you know, certain diagnosis that these patients have, have received, and we'll see when we look at the values of those diagnoses, how to actually handle them. Cool. So yeah, so that's, that's a data description that we need to use. Um, and then now, um, I think we talked about F fill and, and B fill yesterday. Um, and I'm using it here. Uh, and, and this in place, it just means that I'm not going, I don't need to reassign uh, this column back into my data frame. I like doing it like this uh, because I think it saves space and it's quicker. Uh, because, you know, Pandas would handle that instead of me making a copy of this uh, series into, uh, back into the data frame, right? So, so I prefer to use it like this, right? Uh, to just do it in place, let Pandas handle the optimizations, right? Instead of reassigning. So whenever I, there's an in-place uh, parameter for um, any of my, um, uh, you know, functions that I'm using from Pandas, I make use of it, right? Because I think it's more efficient that way. Cool. Uh, so we've done that. So, okay, so we're doing B fill, right? So why why are we back filling, right? So it's because of this, right? So if you look at this uh, data set, I think it's, where is it? Uh, I think it's numbers. I think this is this is it somewhere here. So if you look at this, okay, if you look at this, so you have diagnosis one, two, and three, right? So you're just saying that, you know, if you're backfilling, you're taking this one and you're you're bringing it back, right? You're saying that, you know, um, I'm I'm going to assume that, you know, uh, the the patient's condition hasn't what, what they're feeling today or my diagnosis of today uh, could have been the same yesterday, right? But if you're forward feeling, for example, you're saying that, uh, you know, they haven't changed. But I think if you take the latest uh, health condition, I think you're better off than saying that, you know, trying to keep it at the previous uh, health condition, right? So that, that was my, uh, my guess. Um, you could try forward fill. Uh, but I'm not sure, you know, you could try and see if, if it helps uh, in your modeling, right? Uh, because this is really trial and error, this would be iterative. So I've tried, I've, I've chosen um, a backfill because I'm saying that, you know, if if I've got uh, diabetes today, right, then, you know, I'm assuming that I also had it yesterday. Maybe I did it, but that's my assumption. Then to say that, uh, you know, the other way around, right? Um, that I have it, but I didn't have it yesterday. I just said it, you know? So that's my assumption. That's why I'm back feeling, right? Um, anyway, so now we've done that. And then it's always good to check when you've changed data to say, okay, cool. What is the, uh, the outcome, right? So now you see when we check uh, the number of nulls, then it's zeros, right? So now that's worked. So this commands have worked. Okay. Um, so what we want to go to now is race, right? Because if you look at this. If you look at this, uh, race is about, you know, 2.23 at missing. Uh, they, this one's a very few and race is about 2.23, um, you know, percent that's missing, right? So we need to do something with that. You know, so uh, one thing that could be tempting to do 
is to say, you know, you want to impute race, <laughs> right? Uh, but when you think about that, you know, uh, when you have a data set and you're saying, you know, all the people that I don't know whether they're black or white, I'm just going to say, you know, they're white, right? Because the majority here is white, right? I think you've seen it yesterday. Um, yeah, um, I don't think... I don't think you should be doing that uh, because there could be other things in the data, right? That will just confuse the data set. Um, you know, you can't say, you know, well, you're going to make all the African Americans Caucasian, right? Uh, or all the Asians Caucasian, you know, because they're the majority. Uh, it's going to really mess with your with your data set. So I think what you want to do, based on the fact that actually it's just two percent, right? It's just two percent that's missing, right? You can drop that, right? Um, it, it really, it's not a huge number, right? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just saying, you know, if there's no race, I'm, I'm going to drop that number. Um, I, yeah, so I think in, in the health field, uh, you, you find that there are certain diseases which are prevalent with, among certain uh, races of people, right? So if you impute and you say all the people whom, whose race I don't know, I'm going to make, make them white, yeah, maybe you don't want to be doing that. Okay, so what I also do is just, you know, before I, I drop, I say, okay, uh, what's the length? What, how many, um, uh, it's not really patients here. Uh, I think this is a, a, like hospital visits type of thing. Uh, it's, we had 101,760, yeah. And then after dropping, we're left with 99,000. So from 100,000 to 10,000, right? It's just, you know, um, I mean, 2012, which is exactly the number of missing uh, for whites. So, so really, it's not, it's not a, in, in the scale of things that we have here, it's not a big number, it's not a big drop. We're assuming that we'll be losing too much uh, data there. It's just an assumption, right? There could be uh, some very specific cases where there's important data uh, that we're missing. But that's why data science is an iterative process, right? If you feel like you want to go back and check, right, you can go back to the ones that you've dropped and reincorporate them and then see uh, how your result changes, right? Okay, so now we've said, okay, now we're checking, okay, all the races um, where there was no race uh, uh, is gone, right? Cool. Uh, so the other thing that you want to do, uh, even before, uh, just ignore this for, for now, you want to check, because remember, um, machine learning algorithms only work with um, numerical num uh, numbers, right? With numbers, integers, uh, fluids, uh, etc. Right. So there's this, uh, sorry, this Hindi command here uh, called info, right? It's a it's a pandas command, uh, which will actually you know like give you a summary of your data, right? Uh, it will give you things like okay. Uh, well, actually, we could have used it to figure out, you know, how many nulls we have, right? But, you know, it's also telling us, you see, the, you know, the non-nulls that we have here. Uh, I think there's a few discrepancies, or oh, because we haven't looked at the diagonal and... Uh, I think we did look at that. Okay, we did. I think I just ran this uh, at a different time, so... Uh, yeah, so this should also be the same as as the rest, right? Because I've I fixed this, so I probably like, you know, with, with uh, notebooks, the order of your execution matters. But you've seen here that the diagnosis, uh, the diagnosis, um, in is serious, right? So there are no no more missing values, right? So just don't mind this. I just run it um, after um, or before running that command. Uh, okay, so. Okay, non nulls, um, you know, data type. So this is the most important thing that I, I want us to take a look at here, right? So we have multiple different data types, int 64 bit um, and int, so all of these ints are 64, and then the others, it's the data type is object, right? Uh, in pandas, object just means string, right? So we have all these things we, which are strings and we need to fix that, right? Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, after a, a lot of work, um, you, so like I was saying, you wanna do things programmatically, right? So instead of listing, uh, so what you, you see here, right? So we can ignore some of those things first, but you wanna stay from 19 up until 42, right? 
uh, parity fully one because it's the index starts from zero, from, from zero, yes, so it's minus one. So 19 to 41, we're saying uh, 42 here because we don't include the last um, the last index, right? So we get, I, I'm assuming, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a doctor on this, so I don't really know these things, but I'm assuming those are probably um, medicines, right? Um, yeah, because I mean, the names are like, you can see, that. like, I don't even know, you know, what, what, what some of this. Oh, I know insulin, right? So these are <laughs> medicines, but you know, most, most of these things, I don't know what they mean, but I'm assuming these are medicines. And they're saying that, you know, um, have, so if you go back here to our data, uh, so we look at a uh, metformin, right? No, 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 steady, right? So is it, I think it's a question of was this medicine uh, administered or, or prescribed or whatever to the patient, right? So it's the same goes for all the others. Uh, so when you look at it, uh, When you look at it, you see no, no, no steady, right? So I'm assuming the question is, you know, has, has that person been given uh, that medicine or whatever it is, right? So whether it's a yes, so this, I think, you know, steady and, and no, right? It would be the, the, the binary uh, values there. Okay. Uh, so we are here. So, so those are the ones, right? So just, you know, problematically making it easy instead of typing all these things out. And then the other ones which are easy to type out are these ones, right? So race, gender, age, diagnosis one up until three, change, I think, you know, uh, maybe there's, there's, has the patient um, symptoms or whatever changed? Uh, have they been given uh, diabetes medicines? Have they been diagnosed, right? Because remember, the whole point of, of this is to try to figure out, you know, if, uh, you know, based on this data, start to predict whether uh, the person will be readmitted or not, right? That's the whole point, right? So this is, um, you'll see that this will be our, our target variable, right? Uh, so now, I, yeah, um, I also do, <coughs> as, you know, some list gymnastics here, where I just say that you can concatenate your list here, you may have another list here, and then this just makes it one list, right? And then what we do here, right? So when I when we come back to this, so maybe let's just drop it so it's closer to where it's being used. Okay, so this label encoder. So here, um, it, include, encoding is like, uh, so you have all these, we call them categorical values, right? Yes, no, uh, male, female, uh, African, European, etc. Um, <laughs> so in order to convert them, you know, you need to convert them to a numeric value, right? So we know it's a categorical value, but for our machine algorithms to work with them, we need to convert them to a numeric value, right? So we use this. There's a number of uh, encoders that you can use. You can even search um, on, on the Scikit-Learn uh, website. Uh, but the two most common ones are the label encoder and then the one hold or one word encoder. Uh, the label encoder just says, you know, if gender is male, female, you know, make uh, male one, make uh, female two, right? Uh, and race, for example, as well, you know, um, all those things. Uh, so that's what, you know, this label encoder is doing. The one word encoder, uh, the issue there is that uh, it's, a, it's like a, a binary, right? It's like binary, so it's like, um, you have, uh, how can I explain it? So you have, uh, okay, let's, let's see. Let's see if we can do something quickly here. <coughs> uh, okay, I think that's, that's probably the, the best way to explain it, right? So you have A, you have B, you have C, right? So these are, these are your variables, right? So what it will do, right, so, uh, so these are like, uh, let's say for, let's say these are all for class, right? So what we do, this thing will do is that it will say, you know, class A, 
right? Uh, you, you, you relabel this result. Uh, plus B plus C, and it will be uh, for all your, your rows, it will say, uh, so if, if this is, if it's class A, it will be like that. Okay, let's use 10. So, okay, go. And then this would be uh, one, and this will be zero, right? So you can only have one of this, right? So maybe this is one, this is, right? This is, right? So you see what you've done. You've gone from giving one, um, one column to having three columns. Right, so I mean, this is only in a case. This is you know the, a case where we only have three options. Right, so imagine if you have hundred options. Right, so that's what the one hot encoder would do, and it's one hot because this one is hot, right, and everything else is zero. Everything else is cold. This one is hot, and everything else is cold. Is zero. Right, that's the one encoder. Uh, but the label encoder, basically, what it will do, it will just come here, and then it will make this, it will make this one. Make this two, make this three, right? So you haven't you haven't drastically actually you haven't even changed with label encoder, you haven't even changed the size of your data set. But if you do this, if you use the one out encoder, you've changed the size of your data set. I mean for small data sets, it really it, it doesn't make much difference, but for big ones, uh, it, it makes a, a big difference. And I'll show you here. Um, we can actually let's see. Can run a quick command here to show us that uh, this is a little encoder. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so we're here. <clears throat> so we'll just take one of the columns that we are looking at. Uh, so this is diagnosis one, right? So we, I think we do values. Right, uh, it's unique values. Uh, I think it's, it's n unique. I think. Let's see. Right. So I think this is about one hundred twenty-four unique. Right. Right. So you see, already if we're going to be doing, these are like one about one hundred twenty-four unique values. So if you're going to be using the one node encoder, what does it mean? It means that you're going to be adding like 124 columns, right? So it really doesn't make sense, right? So that's why I prefer the label encoder because it just keeps the, the data set uh, small, at, at, you know, whatever it was. Okay, so that's what it does, this uh, label encoder. Just as, you know, um, if you know, it's male, female, I'm going to give them uh, numbers, you know? Uh, but with age, why do we have, why do we say, why are we saying uh, age is categorical, right? Um, if, I mean, if anyone is looking at, um, at the, the code uh, that I've sent you, can someone answer? Can someone answer? Can someone tell me why, why I've said that age is, is categorical, right? Can someone tell me? I'll wait. Okay, there's a hand. Um, I think it is Daisy. Um, is it because it is binned into categories so like zero to, to ten, like mm -hmm. that? Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's correct. So that's because our age here. If you go over to our data set, you will see that age. I I, I assume age would be numbers. Right? <laughs> When I did this data set, but it's not. You see what, what we have here for age. It's zero to ten. Uh, I think the this says include zero, but don't include ten, right? Uh, you know, ten to twenty, include ten, don't include twenty, twenty to thirty, right? So these are categories, right? So these are not ages in terms of you know actual the actual age. This is like a grouping, right? And with a difference of ten. So that's what they've done. So that's why. <clears throat> We've said that age is a categorical variable in our instance. Right? So age is a categorical variable. Uh, Dag one as well. Uh, some of it looks like, um, <clears throat> like numbers, 
Um, right? Some of it looks like numbers, but really it's not numbers. If you look at the, at the data itself, uh, you have numbers, but you also have um, alphabets, which go with the numbers. Yes, that, that's corrected here. Uh, so, so you have that. Um, Anyway, so, so we'll, we'll do that for, I mean, change would be like, is there been a change? So those are like binaries, like yes or no, uh, et cetera, right? So, um, so I think, the, you know, the quickest way you could do it is just use a for loop, right? So this for loop will just uh, loop through all your categorical columns, and then you do a, a fixed transform, right? Uh, so this is, you know, I like short code, so you just do it like this. Um, one other option would be to do it like this, but you know, you could always look at each, you know, but you see like you have a, a lot of code there, which you don't really need, right? Because you can just, you know, use a for loop and list all the the, the, um, the columns that you, you want to iterate over and then just use a for loop. It works the same, right? Less code. Uh, less places for bugs, right? Cool. And then now we can see after we've executed. Okay, so maybe let's talk about. I'm not sure if I've talked about the fits transform before. So, but basically here you're actually creating a a fit. It's two things that you're doing. You're doing a fit, and then you're doing a transform after the fit, right? Uh, <clears throat> so the fit will say, you know, I'm going to look at you know, the values in this column. In the first case, the values for race, um, so the values for race will be something like African, American, the Caucasian, the Asian, probably Hispanic, right? So this would be the values, right? So uh, you're going to say, when you fit, it's like you are coming up with, a, with some formula, right? So you fit, come up with the formula, and then you transform, you apply, that formula, right? So basically, that what that's what it's doing. But you can do them separately. Uh, but pandas has this fit underscore transform function, which makes it much you know just do these two steps in one step, right? Makes it much much easier for you, right? So that's what we're doing here. We're fitting, and each time, right? Each time when it's race, we're fitting to race. When it's gender, we're fitting to gender. When it's age, you know, so we're not, it's not one fit, right? It's we're doing it uh, for each one because each one has a different number of uh, possibilities or, or possible values, right? Cool, so that's what we're doing. Anyway, so look at um, our data there, then we can see that, you know, this is, it's works. all of these things are numbers. I don't see anything which is not a number. Huh? Everything here is a number, right? Everything here is a number. <clears throat> uh, I've deliberately taken all the columns, I haven't, um, well, except for the ones with, with too many nouns, just taken all the, the columns and said, you know, we're going to, to if you do feature importance, and if you've, you've drawn your, your graphs and you figure, you know what, the certain columns here which really don't contribute much um, to, to, to me learning about my data and probably also to me being able to predict uh, anything, you could have dropped them, but in this case, I decided to keep them all. Uh, you could, you know, when you play with the data, you can remove some of them. But anyway, uh, we'll just run the df.info uh, again to see, and you can see in, like I was saying in the last one that, you know, it was with the notebook, I was running things after the other, and whatever, that's why you see that some of the values here were not enough, but anyway, so you can see the data type, everything is int uh, 64. Uh, I've, I've looked, I mean, really there's not, there are no, there's, there's no floats here. Uh, in, for Dayak, some were floats, but because we figured actually, you know, uh, I think these are probably uh, doctor's codes, right, for all these numbers. So it looked like floats, but really they were not floats. Um, so if you see here. But based on what, what, what other values there, I've seen, realized that actually they're not floats. Uh, if I can show you. I think it should be this. I think it's somewhere here. 
So you see some of them, this look like float, right? But you see, you know, V45. So I've, I've assumed that, you know, these are, you know, you know, codes that doctors use. Yeah, I could be wrong, right? So everything is an integer. <coughs> everything is an integer here. Everything, <coughs> that's what we're seeing here, that everything is an integer and there are no uh, nulls, right? So our 45 columns from 0 to 44 have been transformed. Okay, cool. And now uh, for the modeling part, right? So we've transformed our data, everything's fine. We've got the data in, in the format that we need. Uh, what we need to do now is, you know, is, you know, we, uh, because, I mean, we know because of the problem definition, uh, I didn't explain it much, but the idea is to predict um, the hospitalizations, whether, you know, if someone who was hospitalized will be readmitted or not, right, based on the, on the data that we have. So now we have this um, column here, which is readmitted, that would be our target variable, and then the rest would be you know, uh, the data that we'll use, this will be like our dependent uh, or, or the independent uh, variables, right? So we just, you know, assign the DF to X and then we drop um, readmitted, right? So this is, this two uh, is, is a make up our whole data set. Okay. Label encoder is just normalizing your labels by transforming Non-numerical levels. Yeah, I wouldn't call it normalizing, right? Normalization in statistics it means uh, something very different. So I wouldn't call it normalizing, but it's, it's some sort of transformation, but it's not normalizing, right? Uh, we will look at uh, a form of normalization in a second. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay, so those are columns. Okay, so just to say, you know, um, you know, just for the sanity check, do we still have readmitted here? We don't have readmitted, right? So, so that's fine. So it's been dropped and we have that. Right? Cool. Uh, and then, okay, I was testing something here. And what you want to do, so let's go back up to our data description. So it's important to go back to that. Uh, where are my images? Okay, and what I did to my images. Okay, then. <laughs> so, um, encounter ID, right? Unique identifier of an encounter. Right? Can 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 someone tell me what this means? Because it, 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 it's going to guide us in terms of the next step that we take. What does it mean when they say unique identifier of an account? So now, okay, what, what we want to do now is we want to split our data, right? Into training data and testing data, right? So based on this encounter ID, what, what are we learning about this data? Anyone? Correct, and encounter is hospital visit. But in terms of splitting, right, what, are we, what, are, what does that tell us about our data? Yes, an encounter is, you know, someone going to a hospital or being admitted or whatever. But how does it inform us in terms of how we're going to split our data? What does it mean for splitting our data? <laughs> can I, can, okay, put it another way, can I shuffle my data and then split it? How do I split my data, given that there's an encounter ID? Okay. So, okay. So, what I'm guessing, right, this is, uh, this is a comment. What I'm guessing from the encounter ID is probably, right, a, with the, I've looked at the data here. Look at the data here, <clears throat> and the in, encounter ID really there's no ordering, right? There's no ordering, right? But because um, these are hospital visits, right? 
you, you'd assume there's an order, right? There's definitely an order. Like you, you go, you know, on the first, you go on the fifth, you, go, you know, etc. Right? So you assume that you know there's an order, right? So even though this encounter ID does not tell us anything about an ordering, but I think probably if we looked at, you know, if we <laughs> took out the patient number, <clears throat> we'd probably see learn some things. But I'm I'm assuming that. You know, there's an order to say, you know, when you go to, to hospital, you know, on certain days, there's an order, right? Um, because, you know, you, you're getting treated, you're getting medicines, and then you go again, you know, they give you something else, or, they, you know, they're checking how you're doing, right? So there's an order. So what you want to do, so I'm assuming that I'm, we're getting this data, there's an order, there's something, um, you know, there's an order in this data, and we're getting it uh, in, 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 in sequence, right? So, which is why I've chosen uh, this thing called uh, time series split. Uh, there's another one called, uh, I think it's called train test split, right? There's also this other one that you could use, but I think this one may shuffle your data before it splits it, right? So, you know, yeah, maybe you don't use this, but you can check the documentation. But I think this might shuffle your data because it doesn't assume that the the different rows are, are dependent. So I'm think I'm assuming that they are they are dependent because there's an ordering, right? Because there's a hospital visits. Anyway, um, cool. So I assume that um, anyway. So uh, okay, we'll come back to that. Uh, to this thing here. Uh, so this is what it does, right? This is what the train test does. It takes your data and then, so um, it says, you know, uh, it, it's, uh, okay. So gap is, <clears throat> is just saying, um, do you want a, a, a space between your, uh, your, your splits? Right, so here we've said we want five splits, right? So before, you know, the, if you have the first split, before the next split, you want, you know, some some space, right? Because it's like, so, yes? I'm sorry, I'm sorry because I can't see your screen, I just jump in. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, before you move on, I want to just check if I understood about this encounter. Uh, ID. It's like something that is not really uh, going to split anything because it's in every time it's a unique one. Say that again. So for the encounter ID in the uh -huh. table. Yes. So in terms okay. of uh, splitting the data. This one, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So it's not giving me. Um, a good way of of splitting it because it's like every time it's a unique one. Yes, it should be unique. I think it should be unique. Okay. But what should not yeah what should not be unique is the patient number, but the encounter ID should be unique. I'm assuming because it's like every visit is different. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so every visit should be different. Um, but I mean, I think also between patients, maybe it doesn't need to be unique, but even if it's unique, uh, because maybe this is one hospital and they want to make sure that each visit is different, right? But maybe you can make it unique by patient. But I think what they probably did here, they just need, made it unique for every patient. So, so no two patients can have the same uh, encounter. I, I might have to check that. But uh, from what you're saying, I think that's what they, they probably did, right? Because there are different visits, so there's no need for them to to have, to have the same encounter ID, right? Um, so there's a comment here, say there's a sh the shuffle party, you can make it true or false, yeah, okay. So so you could also do that, right? If you don't shuffle, then you can probably get the a result similar to this. But I think by default it shuffles. Uh, by default it shuffles. But if you don't shuffle, then you could maybe you don't need to use a time series split. But with the time series split, I think you know there's a lot more you could do, right? It's it's more flexible. 
it allows you uh, to work better with uh, time service data. You know, as you can see, <coughs> there's many parameters that you can pass in. But anyway, so this actually allows me to do uh, what you call it um, the cross sort of cross validation, right? Because now I have, I sort of, this is, I have end splits. It's more like, you know, I have five, it's like five, five fold cross validation. I have five, I've divided my data set into five data sets, right? And, and this is, you know, uh, the first um, where it starts, where it ends, you know, where this one starts, where it ends, you know, etc. I've done it for all of this, right? So it allows you to do that. So you can split it for both your, um, your, your target variable and also your, your dependent, uh, your, your independent variables, which is your X, right? So when you do it like that, then you can run multiple models. Um, so what I wasn't able to do yet, I haven't been able to do yet now is actually, uh, with the put, cause the thing what I'm going to need to do here is put the models, right? Run the models here based on so it, it, each each place here so i'm going to get my x train and and y train right so so i'm going to fit uh, x train a fit x train right test with uh, x test right uh, and then compare y train uh, with Y test, right? That's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to be doing it five times, right? And then what I've seen after five times, then I'll, I'll have, a, have a better feel of how my model is performing, right? Because I'll see, okay, what's the average performance of, of, of among all of all these three, uh, five different uh, data sets that, that I've split, right? So that's what, you know, I, I need to add here. And the other thing that I also need to add is this standard scaler. So I'll show you. So there's a min max scaler, uh, which is I think um, I think uh, Yabu was explaining earlier that it's a, it's a Gaussian, it's normal, right? Uh, but this one is just you know from between zero and one, right? Uh, I I've, from my experience I found that you know standard scaler works best, uh, but where would I apply the standard scalar? I would apply it, you know, probably same as, as what I did here, the easiest way, uh, is what I did here, right? Is what I did here, um, you know, instead of LB, do the scalar and then do the, the, the actual columns. But you wanna look at, if we apply that, you wanna look at, you know, uh, Maybe let's look at the, this new data set that we have transformed. We're going to look at this and think, you know, uh, because some of these this numbers really are, like are categorical. So maybe you want to look at the ones that are, are numerical, right? Look at only the ones that are numerical and then scale them, right? Scale those ones and then you apply your model. Uh, but I'm going to show you quickly here just as we wrap up, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so so here we've applied the min max scalar, right, which just means that your, your values are going to range from minus one to one, right, and then we fit the, the, the training data, okay, we've saved, um, you know, uh, okay, well, yeah, we've sort of saved the, the the model, the whatever it was, whatever we fitted, right? So this is the, the fit, uh, the, the scales uh, formula that I was explaining in terms of LB, uh, the uh, label encoder, right? So, you know, that's sort of the function that you're saving here. Um, and then, you know, you can come back, you can do that. Uh, you can, so it's like doing the fit transform here, but you're doing the transform uh, a bit later. And then you do that for, for the X test. So, uh, when you are doing it like this, right? So you fit the X train, but you no longer fit the X test, right? In this case, unlike what we did here, uh, unlike what we did here, right? So for the label encoder, so the label encoder, we just encoded the whole the whole data set, right? That's what we've done, we've, you know. 
because really we are just you know it's a transformation that we're, we're applying for everything, right? But um, here, right? Because here we haven't split anything, right? We haven't split anything. But here, because we've already we split, you apply it on the you fit it on the train, and then you use whatever you the function you fit on the train to uh, to x test, right? To just transform it because we've already fit it, right? Because if you do the the fitting twice, right? If there's a big difference between uh, your training data and your testing data, right? You'd have problems, right? You'd have you'd have big problems, right? Because uh, yeah, like you, you, your result is is working on two different uh, data set. But you're, in 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 model development, you're saying that you know I'm training uh, my my uh, my model to learn from the train, and then based on what I learn from from the training uh, data, I want to apply that to my test data, right? So I have to learn enough so that I can apply. It. So even even when you are normalizing, you're doing the same here, right? And yeah, so in this, the, you can see here that, you know, all the values are, uh, yeah, so min, max, okay, we're not seeing the negatives, but you should have some negatives, but you can see that, you know, the maximum is one here, but it, it, there's a minimum, which is uh, minus one that you can also get. And then the model that we've chosen, uh, you can choose any number, any model, but random forest works uh, for the majority. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer you, uh, Sidoin, just now. Uh, yeah, but the uh, random first works for the majority, right? It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, uh, it's a boosting algorithm. So it you 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 sort of create a, a lot of different trees uh, or decision trees, and then you have sort of average. So it's like it's got it's got good good performance, right? It's got good performance, um, yeah. So, and then this is, you can also, you know, based on that, you can score it, so you know, so you've got your random forest there, you fit on the on the train, uh, training data, and then you test on, on the test data, and then you get your score. Um, I think you know, in terms of, uh, you know, um, scores and accuracies and, uh, you know, functions that we're optimizing, uh, so out of time, we can talk about that uh, next time. But yeah, you can also get, you know, your confusion metrics here, right? Yeah, precision, recall, F1 score, uh, support, etc. So basically, that's it in terms of uh, modeling. Uh, yeah, that's what you need to do. Um, yeah, I think we can... Um, okay, let me, there's a question. Um, uh, what's the difference between min max scalar and standard scalar? Um, I think min max, I could be wrong, uh, but I'm, one is from zero to one and the other is from minus one to um, to one. That's what it does. So it, it takes all your data and then it, it transforms it uh, like that. So I think someone, so min max scalar. Someone is putting a comment. Full standard normal distribution. I mean, zero skills. Then I tell, uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. So min max is minus one to one. And then um, standard is from, uh, so min is one, is zero. But I think uh, and unit variance. But yeah, I don't think uh, standard has negatives. So this is min max. So this one is uh, is a range. What's a range? Feature range zero to one. Okay. Okay. Maybe I had I had it the other way around. Okay. So, so another. One. So this is standard. This is min max. Standard. Scale. Oh, okay. So I had it the other way around. Okay. Standard scalar is like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's negative uh, one to one and then min max is, is, is uh, zero to one. My bad. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for, for that. Yeah. 
So I guess in, in that case, I should have used minimax. Cool. Is there anything else? Are there any other questions? Okay. What should we do to improve our model accuracy? Um, yeah, you play with the data. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, feature engineering, feature selection. Um, yeah, you can add more features that you think, combinations of features that you think um, can make sense, right? Based on, 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 on the, the, the columns that you already have here. Right. So you can have combinations of features, you could do uh, other transformations that you can do. Yeah, so that's what, that's what you can do. But yeah, you play around with all this data um, until, until you are able, with confidence, to get, to be able to predict uh, readmitted, uh, you know, rates at a, at a, at a higher uh, accuracy. Uh, Anastasia, are you there? Okay, I'm not sure if Anastasia is there, <clears throat> but what we're saying here, uh, right, you see here it says modeling and visualization. There is no visualization that we've done today. Um, so here it actually says uh, integrating machine learning with stream is sort of what we did um, in week zero, but in, in a bit more depth. So uh, that will be for tomorrow. I think, uh, yeah, probably tomorrow afternoon. Um, yeah, they will, they will share uh, that information with you. Is there anything else? If there's nothing else, then um, yeah, we can, can end uh, the tutorial. Thanks, guys. Cheers, uh, Abdul, 10 Academy team, you can end the call. Uh, I have a question. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, concerning the assignments. Okay. Yeah, uh, I've seen that uh, they have requested that the assignment should be uh, completed, to be delivered tomorrow, but uh, during the calls, we during the stand-up call, we, the, we, were say, we were told that it should be delivered today. So I don't know if there's a confusion. Mm. Um, I'm not sure, but I think Anastasia was updating that information. Uh, yeah, maybe just just check with us on Slack. We'll, we'll confirm. But if in in the classroom it's been updated as tomorrow. Oh, okay. They're saying the deadline is today for the assignment. But yeah, but we can um, yeah. Confirm on, on, on Slack as well, but they're saying the deadline is today. Are you answered, Martin? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, but yeah, let's let's also confirm on Slack, but uh, the team is saying uh, the deadline is today for the assignment. Okay, thanks guys. Cheers.